Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, you make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a halter top. Halters don't get enough love, so let's change that. For this one, I tried a new strap that I'm loving and there's some texture for a bit of spice. Speaking of, if you're looking to add some spice to your crochet life, you're in the right place. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 170 grams of yarn. That's 300 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us a streaming service you can't live without. For me, it's gotta be Disney Plus, cause I'm basically a big kid. Details with the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we are all going to grab our 5mm hook. And we're going to get started with our alpine stitch detail and it's going to start off the same for everyone so let's all start off by making a chain of seven now that we have our chain we're going to do our first row which is just a half double crochet row so block off that last chain do a chain two that chain two doesn't count as a stitch that's just our turning chain and from here we're going to yarn over insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook we're going to yarn over pull through the first loop Yarn over, pull through all three loops. There's our first half double crochet, let's do this again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, pull through, pull through all three, and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. Now that our row one is all finished up, our second row is going to be another half double crochet row, but with an increase of two into the beginning and into the end of the row. So chain two, Flip our work, and let's start with our increase of two. So yarn over, into the first stitch from our previous row, insert with one half double crochet, and then into that same first stitch with a second half double crochet. That is our increase. And from here, we're gonna pull one half double crochet into every stitch until we have one stitch left. So I've just made my way all the way down with my row two, leaving that last stitch, and we're gonna close it off with an increase. So yarn over and into that last stitch, insert with one half double crochet, and then into that same last stitch, a second half double crochet, and that is our increase. Now from here, we're gonna chain two and flip our work, getting ready for our row three, or our first alpine stitch row. So when it comes to doing our alpine stitches, it's always going to alternate between a half double crochet and then a front post double crochet. So our row three is gonna start with a half double crochet. So into the last stitch from our previous row, Go ahead and yarn over, insert your hook into there with our first half double crochet, and then our following stitch is gonna be a front post double crochet. So all of our front post double crochets are gonna be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row three, we're gonna be inserting our hook into our row one. So taking a look at our row one, we're going to make sure that we are skipping that chain two, and then we're going to insert our hook into that second half double crochet. So we are not gonna be inserting our hook into this first half double crochet because the half double crochet we just did counts as this stitch. And then into the following is gonna be our front post double, so yarn over once. And then insert your hook underneath that stitch and through the other side. From here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're gonna pull up nice and tall to get the same height as the half double crochet we just did. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. 
And once we have that, we're going to get started again with our half double crochet and front post double crochet repeat. But once we get to the middle, we're going to have to do an increase. So right after our half double and front post double, we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. We are going to skip one stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch. And then into the following, we're going to insert with a half double. So insert, pull through, pull through all three. And now from here, we should be where our middle stitch is within our row one. And since we started off with a chain seven, our middle stitch should be our fourth stitch. So just to count together, starting from the right, making sure we're not counting that chain two, here's one, two, three, four. And then counting from the left, here's one, two, three, four. Into that middle stitch, we're going to do a front post double crochet, a half double crochet, and then a front post double crochet, and that's gonna be our increase. So let's get that started. Let's yarn over once. Into that middle stitch from our previous odd number row, go ahead and insert your hook underneath, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. Now we have to do a half double crochet, so yarn over. Skip one stitch from our previous row, and then insert a hook into the following stitch. And since we're doing the increase portion, this is going to be the middle stitch from our previous row. So insert your hook into there, pull through, pull through all three, and then another front post double crochet into that same middle stitch into row one. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath that stitch and through the other side, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. And now from here, we're going to continue to half double and front post double crochet, making our way all the way down, but leaving the last stitch so that we can do it together. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row into the following, a half double crochet. Now that we're getting closer to the end, we're going to be doing a front post double crochet into that second to last half double crochet from row one. So yarn over underneath that next stitch, pull through. We're going to pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. And just to make sure that everything is even, our last stitch for this row three should be a half double crochet. But we're actually going to be doing a half double crochet two together because once we go in with a single crochet row, once we work on this side, the single crochet is going to be worked into the chain two, leaving this half double crochet. And if we just do a half double crochet into this side, it's going to be taking up this half double crochet. So it's going to look just a little bit lopsided. So let's do that stitch together. We should have a total of two stitches left. Here's one, here's two. What we're going to do is yarn over and insert your hook into that second to last stitch, yarn over and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And once we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and then insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row. Yarn over and pull through. And once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all four. And we're doing this, making sure that we're not confusing it with just a decrease because this gives us an extra body for that half double crochet so we can work into that side row when we're doing our single crochets. If we just do a regular decrease, then it's just gonna kind of be a cluster along the edge. But we also did it this way because we don't wanna add another stitch to this row because we need everything to stay odd. But once we have this row all finished up, let's chain two, flip our work, and then every even number row is going to be a half double crochet and all of our half double crochets are always going to start and end with an increase of two half double. So let's all yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row with our increase. So there's one half double crochet and then into that same first stitch with a half double crochet again. And then from here, put one half double crochet into every stitch until we have just one left. And so we've just put one half double crochet into every stitch. We left the last one, so let's do our increase. Let's all start with a yarn over. Insert our hook into that last stitch with our first half double. With our second half double, chain two and then flip our work. And this is what our work should be looking like. And now let's get started on a row five or our second alpine stitch row. So when it comes to doing our alpine stitches, each of our stitches are going to be staggered from the previous alpine stitch row. So as an example of that, since the first stitch that we did from our previous alpine stitch row is a half double crochet, we're always going to be putting a front post double crochet into there. So to get that started, we're going to yarn over once, find the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row, then we're going to insert our hook underneath and through the other side. From there, let's yarn over, pull through, 
Don't forget to pull up nice and tall. Pull through two. Pull through two. And it's still a front post double crochet and half double crochet stitch sequence. So yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. Skip that first stitch from our previous row and then into the following. Insert with a half double crochet. Now we're going to continue to do this until we reach our middle stitch. So again, we're going to yarn over. Insert your hook into that following stitch, which is going to be the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. If we insert our hook underneath the front post double crochet from our previous row, it's actually going to give us a really pretty ribbing, which is pretty, but not what we want for this project. So making sure that we're inserting underneath the half double crochets, we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two. And then right after that, yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following. And now that we've made our way down to the middle, let's do our increase. So just like before, we're going to yarn over. And now we're going to insert our hook underneath the half double crochet from our previous row, which is the middle stitch. So insert your hook underneath through the other side, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Skip one stitch from our previous row and half double crochet into the following stitch. And then we're going to be doing one more front post double crochet into that middle stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath that stitch. Pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two. And now from here, let's close off the rest of this row. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following. Yarn over, finding the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. Insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row. Insert our hook into that next stitch with a half double crochet. And then now we're going to close this row off with a front post double crochet that is combined with a half double crochet. So how that's going to work is yarn over. Looking at our previous alpine stitch row, we have our half double crochet two together. As you guys can see, we should have two separate bodies to work into. Here's our first one. Here's our second one. We're only going to be inserting our hook underneath the first one. So insert your hook underneath that half double crochet. Yarn over, pull through, pull up nice and tall, and pull through two. And once we have those two loops on our hook, let's yarn over, and then insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row. Yarn over, pull through, and once we have those four loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through all four of those loops. And from here, let's chain two, Flip our work and do our half double crochet row. So start and end this row with an increase of two half double crochet with just one half double crochet into every stitch in between. All right, so all together we should have rows one through six all finished up. And now from here, it's just gonna be a repeat of rows three through six until this width that we have is just as wide as the base of our neck. So let's just get started on our falling row, which is going to be row seven. And that's going to be a start of a repeat of row three. So from here, chain two and flip your work. Now that our work is flipped, we're going to get started on row seven, which is going to start off the same way that row three did. Or if you guys just take a look at our previous alpine stitch row, that started with a front post double crochet. So now we're going to start with a half double crochet because remember all of our stitches need to be staggered. So yarn over into the last stitch from our previous row with our first half double crochet. And then from here, preparing for a front post double crochet, yarn over, and then insert our hook into the first half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. And then through the other side, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two. Now we're going to continue to do our half double crochet and front post double crochet until we're ready to do our increase in the middle of our row. Now a really quick way to know when to stop right before we do our increases is taking a look at our previous alpine stitch row. So if you guys are looking at it with me, this is my last one. We have one, two, three, four stitches, and then our increase. So every section that we have right before our increase and actually on the other side of our increase, but we're just talking about this part right now, is gonna have one extra stitch from our previous row. So just to show you guys this one together, since we have four stitches right before our increase, for this row, we should have five stitches. So we just did one, two, let's do three, 
Let's do four. And then five stitches. And now we're all at the middle, so we can do our increase together. So just like before, we're gonna yarn over. Insert your hook into the middle stitch from our previous row. Pull through. Pull up nice and tall, pull through two. Pull through two. Yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Skip one stitch from our previous row. And then insert a hook into that following stitch, which should be the middle stitch from our previous row. And then to close off our increase, another front post double crochet into that middle stitch. And now that we have that all finished up, we're going to close off this row. Now this side of our alpine stitches is actually going to mirror this side. So since the last stitch that we did on this side was a half double crochet, along this side we're going to start with a half double crochet as well. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into the following stitch, pull through, pull through all three, which is our first half double crochet for this side, and we should end with a total of five stitches, since we have a total of five stitches on this side of our increase as well. So front post double crochet into the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. We have one, two stitches, three stitches, four stitches, and then for all the rows that start with a half double crochet, we're always gonna end it with a half double crochet two together. So just like before, we should have two stitches left. So yarn over into that second to last stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over into that last stitch, yarn over and pull through. Once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all four. And just to double check our work, we have one, two, three, four, five stitches along the side of our increase. And then along this side, we should have one, two, three, four, and five stitches. Remember, we aren't gonna count the last body of that half double crochet. And from here is our half double crochet row. So just chain two, flip our work, and start and end our row with an increase of two half double crochet with one half double crochet into every stitch in between. All right, so we have just finished up our row eight. So let's just get started with our row nine. From here, we're gonna chain two and flip your work. So taking a look at our previous alpine stitch row, that started with a half double crochet, so we're gonna start this row with a front post double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath the body of the first half double crochet from our previous alpine row. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, Pull through two, which is our first stitch. Remembering every row that we have should have one extra stitch right before our increase. So since we had five here, we should have six right before our increase. So here's our first. Yarn over, still skipping one stitch from our previous row. Half double crochet into the following. There's two. There is three. Four. Five and then six. Now from here, we should be right at the middle, so where our increase is, so let's do the increase. That's always gonna be the same, so front post double crochet into the middle half double crochet from our previous alpine row. Yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Skip one stitch from our previous row and half double crochet into the next, which is the middle stitch from our previous row. And then to close off our increase, another front post double into that middle stitch. And once we have that, we're going to mirror everything that we have here along the other side. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following. And since we have a total of six stitches over here, we should end with six over here. So here's one. Here is two. Three. Four, five, and then the sixth stitch is going to be a front post double crochet because we started this row off with a front post double crochet. And when we end our row with a front post double crochet, it is always gonna be combined with a half double. So yarn over, and then taking a look at our half double crochet two together, there should be two bodies to work into. We're gonna be working into that first one that we have. So inserting our hook underneath, yarn over, pull through, Pull up nice and tall, yarn over, and pull through two. Once we have those two loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, 
and insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row and pull through. Now that we have those four loops, just yarn over, pull through all four, and then from here, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and do our even number row, which is going to start and end with an increase of two half double crochet, with one half double crochet into every stitch in between. All right, so we are back, and all together, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 rows all finished up. And this is what it should look like. From here, we're still going to continue to repeat rows three through six until we get the height that we need. So making sure that we're placing our row one right where we want the bottom of this top to be, I want mine to be around where my waist is. I'm gonna continue to repeat these rows until this becomes the width of my neck. But also keeping in mind that we don't want this to get any higher than our underarm. And I'll meet you guys back right before we're about to get started on a repeat of row three, so I can show you what to do from there. I am back with the increased portion of my alpine stitch detail. Now I have a total of 22 rows. My height is just about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And my width at its widest is about seven inches or 18 centimeters. And now from here, all we're gonna do is just continue to do our alpine stitches until we get the length of the piece that we need. So I'm just going to do the following four rows with you guys and then it's gonna be a repeat. So let's get started by doing a chain two and flipping our work. All right, so just to do the first few stitches for this first alpine stitch row where we aren't gonna be doing any increases, we should have met back right before we're about to get started on our repeat of our row three. And our row three started with a half double crochet. So what we're gonna do is yarn over into the last stitch from our previous row, a half double crochet. And now from here, we're gonna yarn over, preparing for a front post double crochet. We're gonna find the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row and do our front post double crochet, and that is pretty much it. From here, just yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the next, and then front post double crochet into the following half double crochet from our last alpine stitch row. And then that's it. We're just gonna continue to alternate between the half double crochet and a front post double crochet, making our way all the way down. All right, so I'm back, and we should have made our way all the way across with our non-increase row. And just as a really quick tip, we should have all ended on a half double crochet because we should all have an odd number of stitches. And just to show you guys, the last front post double crochet would have been worked into the half double crochet that's combined with our previous row's front post double crochet, and then our half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row, and that's it. Now every even number row is going to be a half double crochet row. So chain two and put one half double crochet into every stitch, no increases. So now that this half double crochet row is all finished up, we're gonna get started on our following alpine stitch row. So since the first stitch from our previous alpine stitch row was a half double crochet, we're now gonna start this following row with a front post double crochet. So chain two, flip our work, yarn over, and then into that half double crochet from our previous row, insert your hook into there with a front post double, skip one stitch from our previous row and a half double and continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we're ready to do our last front post double crochet. So we've made our way all the way down and are ready to do our last front post double crochet. Since this is the last stitch for the row, we're gonna be doing a front post double crochet combined with a half double crochet, just so the edge stays nice and blunt. So yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through, pull up nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have those two loops, we're gonna yarn over and then insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. And now the second alpine stitch row where we didn't do any increases is all finished. Now once again, chain two, flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch just to talk you guys through what we're gonna be doing after this. All right, so we are back and I have just finished up four alpine stitch rows with absolutely no increases into them. And now all we're gonna do from here is continue to repeat these four rows until this can reach all the way up to right underneath our underarm. Now making sure that I'm placing my first row right where I want the bottom of my top to be, so right where my waist is, I'm just gonna keep working my way up and then I'll meet you guys back right after I do a chain up of one cut right after I finish an alpine stitch row. I have just finished up the entire height of my alpine stitch detail. I have a total of 33 rows and my height 
now is about 11 inches or 28 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to start working on our strap. But right before we get that started, we're going to have to single crochet along the edges. So since I did do a chain up of one and cut, what I'm going to do is insert my hook into the bottom corner stitch, insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, making my way all the way up. So just to do the first few single crochets together, we're going to start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that side loop and then single crochet. Next, I'm going to find my following side row, which is this right here. And then I'm going to insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one. And then there's two. Let's do this again. Start by finding our following side row. This is mine. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook into there with one. And then finding my next side row, which is this one right here, I'm going to insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one. And then there's two. And then that's it. Just continue to alternate, making your way all the way up. Once we reach the top corner, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back. So now that our single crochet row along the edge is all finished up, let's get started on our strap. So right after we do a chain up of one and cut, we're going to want to reinsert our hook into that bottom corner stitch. From here, we're going to make a chain the width that we would like for our strap to be. Now I would like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of six. Now that I have my chain, I'm going to block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, I'm going to insert with a slip stitch. So into that chain, insert your hook into there. Once we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both. There's our first slip stitch. Let's do another one. Inserting our hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through everything. And then just for fun, into that following chain, yarn over and pull through everything. And continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Now a really quick tip that I have when it comes to working our back loop slip stitches is make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn right after we finish. Otherwise our falling rows are going to be too tight to work into. And now that we have just slip stitched all the way down our chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. So start by inserting our hook into that next available stitch. We're going to yarn over. Pull through everything, and now this first row is nice and attached. Now we do need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base and flip our work. Now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches for some ribbing and for some really nice stretch. So start by inserting your hook into the last stitch from our previous row and insert in through that back loop, yarn over, gently pull through everything, and again into that following stitch's back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we're at the end of our row two, to work our way up to the following row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now we're just going to work our way back down towards the base, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we've made our way all the way down, we're just going to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch that we have. We're going to insert our hook into there with a slip stitch. And now our row three is all closed off. And just to get started on our following row, insert your hook into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And from there, we're just going to repeat, making our way all the way up until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the base, and then I will meet you back. So I've just done my back loop slip stitch rows, making my way all the way up, and I don't have any more stitches left to work into. Now this is going to be our strap, so all we're going to do from here is just chain one, flip our work, and then continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows until this reaches the back of our neck. Now a really quick tip that I have for you guys is when it comes to doing our back loop slip stitch rows, this will make this portion cinch up just a little bit, maybe even curl, but that's completely normal. It'll all even out once when everything is seamed up. But just to do the first row off the base, we're going to chain one, doesn't matter what end we're on, whether if we're on the inside or the outside, flip our work. And then just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And just continue to repeat this row until we have a slip stitch strap that can stretch all the way up to the back of our neck. 
do a chain up a one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. So I am back and my strap is all finished up. Now I have a total of 84 rows and the strap that I made is just about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters and that's unstretched. And now I can get started on our side panel. So right before we get started on our first row, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of single crochets that we made when we worked along the side of our Alpine stitch detail. So if you guys have my numbers, I had a total of 49 single crochets. So what I'm going to do, starting from the bottom, is count up 49 side slip stitch rows and then insert my stitch marker into that stitch. And now we're going to do a single crochet row from the bottom to our stitch marker. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch. Insert our yarn onto our hook. Pull through. Do a chain up of one to secure. Now let's do our first few single crochets. So let's all start by finding our first side slip stitch row which mine is this divot right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop with one single crochet. Now that I have that, I'm gonna find my following side slip stitch row, which is this raised row right over here. Insert my hook into that side loop with another single crochet. And that's it. We're just gonna to continue to put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row until we reach our stitch marker stitch. So I've just made my way all the way up with my single crochets until I've reached my stitch marker. And to do the first half of our side panel, we're going to be increasing into the top stitch that we have until this can stretch over to mid underarm. Now I already have my other side panel all finished up, so I already know the numbers that I need. So for the first half of my side panel, I'm just gonna have one row where we do an increase into the top loop because we're going to fill in the rest of our side panel, but we need to do that starting at the bottom. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do an increase into this first stitch and let you guys do the rest of this section on your own. So making sure for this first part of our side panel, we're only increasing into this top loop. We're going to chain one and flip our work. Now into the first stitch from our previous row, we're going to be doing an increase of two back loop slip stitches. So insert your hook into that stitches back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And then once more into that same back loop. Now, just as a quick tip, doing an increase can be a little difficult because this first stitch that we did for the increase can actually look like it's tucked under. So just make sure that you're keeping track of the numbers of your rows to make sure that we're not accidentally missing one. But once we have that increase, all I'm going to do is put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now, if you guys need more rows for this first side panel section, at the end of this row, chain one. Flip your work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch while doing an increase into that last stitch. Now continue to do this and I will meet you guys back along the bottom so we can fill in the rest of our side panel. All right, so I'm back with the first half of my side panel. Now what we're gonna do from here is continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows, but now we're gonna be doing decrease of threes along the top so that this point right here can come down in a straight line so that we have a straight edge to seam the back panel into. Now a quick tip before we get started with this section, this fill in portion is going to be completely up to you. Since this top corner stitch should reach mid underarm, we're just gonna to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows until the bottom corner that we have can also stretch to mid underarm, making this completely vertical. Now unstretched, it's going to look slanted, which is completely normal, just like how this side looks for me. But if you guys take a look at this top point and if I stretch this all the way over, it can be stretched into one straight line. Now I'm just going to do the following row with you guys. So since we should all be along the bottom, chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last three. So I made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row and I should have one, two, three stitches left. Now let's do our decrease of three. So into that third to last back loop, pull through, into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then insert your hook into that last back loop. Once we have those four loops, just yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and that is our decrease of three. Now along the top, we are always gonna do a decrease of three, so since we're at the edge, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and start with another decrease of three. So insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row's back loop, pull through, into that following stitch's back loop, pull through, and then into that following stitches back loop. Once we have those four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and that's it. 
From here, just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last three and then do a decrease of three into those last three stitches. Now from here, just continue to repeat our two previous rows until the bottom corner that we have can stretch to about mid underarm. Now, like I said, it'll still look a little slanted, but it's completely fine. I'll meet you guys back along the bottom once we have that all finished up because we have to do one more row right after that. All right, so my side panel is all finished up. Now, counting from my first single crochet row, I have a total of 12 rows, and this width is just about an inch and a half or four centimeters unstretched. Now, we should have all ended along the bottom, and now we just have one more row left to do, and all that's gonna be is putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we aren't gonna have a decrease at the top, and then putting one single crochet into every side row so that we can clean up this edge right here. So from the bottom, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you guys back right at this corner. All right, so now that we have reached our side rows, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. Now, just in case if these top loops aren't as easy for you guys to see, a really quick tip that I have for you guys is the amount of single crochets that we're about to do is going to be the amount of decreased rows that we have. So not the entirety of the side panel that we have, but just the rows where we decreased. So if you guys have my numbers, I only had 10 decreased rows, so I'm going to have 10 single crochets. So I'm going to show you guys where I'm going to be inserting my hook. So this is my last slip stitch right here. I'm going to start by finding my first side row, which is this one right here. I'm going to insert into my top loop with a single crochet. There should be long-ish stitches that we can see, but just in case if you can't, just find a sturdy stitch and insert your hook into there. So I'm gonna find my next one. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook and single crochet, and then that's it. I'm going to continue to do this until I have my total of single crochets. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up with my single crochets. Once when I had my last one, I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now all we're going to do here is repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so I am back and both of my side panels are all finished up. Now the next thing we're going to do is going to be our back panel, but that's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be all back loop slip stitches. So let me just show you how we're going to get that started. We're all going to start by making a chain with the same amount of stitches that we have for our last row when it comes to our side panel. So that includes all of our slip stitches and our single crochets. So if you guys had my numbers, I had a total of 40 stitches. So to get started on the back panel, I'm gonna make a chain of 40. And I actually have my back panel all finished up, so I'm just gonna be doing a little sample size with you guys. So now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook. Insert your hook into there with a slip stitch, so yarn over and pull through everything on our hook and continue to put one slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're gonna be doing just rows of back loop slip stitches. So at the end of every row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into that back loop and do a back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way down. When we reach the end of the row, do a chain one, flip our work and repeat and we aren't gonna be having any increases or decreases for this section. So all we're gonna do is repeat our back loop slip stitch row until this can stretch across our back, making sure that we're placing the first row at mid underarm across our back and the last row should reach mid underarm. So this is gonna be where the fit of our piece comes in from. So if you guys would like yours to be a little bit more relaxed or if you'd like it to be more fitted or bodycon, add fewer rows, just make sure they can fit around us. I'll meet you guys back once I have mine all finished up so we can seam everything together. So my back panel is all finished up. I have a total of 48 rows and my width is just about seven inches or 17 centimeters unstretched. And now that this is all finished up, we can now seam it to the front panel. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right, so this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So how that's gonna work is that we wanna make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Meaning all of the detail that we have for the front panel is faced away from us. And then we're just going to place our back panel on top. And from here, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then from there, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. 
Now from here, our outside loop slip stitch is gonna start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel. And we're gonna insert our hook only in through that front loop. Next, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel. And then we're gonna insert our hook only in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And once we have all three of those loops, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Now we're doing it this way so that this just looks like another back loop slip stitch drill. So let's do the next one. Find that following stitch into the front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything and that is basically it. We're just gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed together, what we're going to do now is the front band. So what we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the first stitch that we have along the right side. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through. And from here, we're going to start by making a chain the height that we would like for our front band to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of five. So now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain. Do a chain one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything, and that's pretty much it. We are experts at slip stitches now, so put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So working across the front panel, we're gonna find that next available stitch. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull through. And now our row one is nice and connected. Now getting started on our row two, we're going to need to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. So insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through everything, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through everything. We are also experts at back loop slip stitches, so continue to put one into every stitch. When we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. I'll meet you guys back just to connect it into the base once more. And now that we're at the end of our row three, we're gonna slip stitch it into the base together one last time. So into that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook into there with a slip stitch, to close off this row, and since we're here, just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And just continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we have made our way all the way across our front panel to the next strap. And then once we get there, we're gonna seam it to the strap together. All right, so I'm back with my front band and it's all back loop slip stitches and now we're going to seam this end together and then after we'll seam the other one. So first things first, let's look at the back of this piece. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we're looking at the back because this is going to be a single crochet seam and we don't necessarily want this seam to be seen so we want it along the inside but we don't need to flip the whole thing inside out because that's way too much work. But what we're gonna do from here, since we all should be along the bottom since we had an odd number of stitches for our last Alpine stitch row, we're gonna insert our hook into the first stitch that we have, into the band. And then this is gonna be the tricky part. We're gonna find that first side row that we have within the strap. I'm gonna insert my hook into there, and then we're gonna single crochet it together. So just yarn over, pull through, pull through two, and let's do that again. We're gonna find the next available stitch into the band, and then we're gonna find the next available side row into the strap. Mine is this divot right here. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that top loop, single crochet, and let's do another one. Into that next stitch, into the band, into the next side row within the strap. Mine is this raised row now, so I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook into there, and single crochet. And we're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the band. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side, so I'll just show you where to insert your hook. All right, so now that this seam is all finished up, I did do a chain up of one cut, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So first, just make sure that we're still looking at the inside of our piece. We're gonna insert our hook now, 
into that first side row that we have into the strap and then into that first available stitch into the band and then do the same seam when we don't have any more stitches left to work into do a chain up a one and cut and then i'll meet you back all right so now that our front band is all finished up we're now going to get started on the back which is going to be pretty much the same thing but we don't already have top stitches to work into we have a bunch of side rows so we're just going to do a single crochet row first so what we're going to do is insert our hook into the side row that we have that's right next to our strap going towards the back. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're just going to work our way all the way across, putting one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding that first side row. This is mine right here. Insert your hook into there with a single crochet. This is my following side row. Insert my hook into there with a single crochet. And continue to do this, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, I will meet you guys back. All right, so now that our single crochet row is all finished up, we're going to be making another band for the back. So go ahead and start by making a chain the length that we would like for the back panel band to be. I want mine to match the front. So I'm going to start by making another chain of five. And this is actually going to be done exactly the same as the front, so I will not bore you with the details. Just make your way all the way to the other strap with no increases and no decreases with our back loop slip stitch rows, making sure that we're connecting into the base the same exact way. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. All right, so I'm back with my back band and it was just all back loop slip stitches with no increases and no decreases. And now we're going to seam it to the strap. And once we have this, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So for this one, we are also gonna do a single crochet seam. So make sure that our work is slipped inside out. All right, so this seam is going to be done pretty much the same way that we did the front panel seam, but I just wanted to show you guys, if you guys had an even number of single crochets, we should have an even number of rows. And if that's the case, then we should end along the outside. Because when we did the front panel, we had an odd number, so we ended along the bottom corner, so it was a little bit easier to connect the two pieces. So what we're going to do is count out the same amount of chains that we made when it comes to each of our side rows, so that it's nice and even. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a chain of five. So when it comes to the strap, I'm going to count out one, two, three, four, five, and then insert my hook into that fifth side row. If you guys ended along the bottom, go ahead and just insert your hook into the bottom corner stitch of the front and the back. And since we already know how to do our single crochet seam, I'm just going to do the first one with you guys really quickly. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything, find the first stitch from our front panel, insert your hook into there. And then find our following side row within the strap, insert your hook into there, and then single crochet. And then we're just going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. And then right after that, go ahead and repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that our bands along the top are all finished up, we're going to do our bottom band now. So what we're gonna need to do is single crochet along the bottom edge just so we have some stitches to work into. So first things first, making sure that our work is slipped right side out, we're gonna insert our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row. Since we already know how to do this, let's just do the first two. Start by finding our first available side row. Mine is this raised row right here, so I'm going to insert my hook into there with a single crochet. I'm going to find my following side row, which is this divot. I'm going to insert my hook into there and single crochet into there as well, and that's it. I'm going to continue to do this, making my way all the way around. So we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. We have slip stitched into that chain space, and now we're going to do the bottom band. Now our bottom band is going to be done exactly the same way as the top bands. So just a bunch of back loop slip stitch rows. So I'm just going to talk you guys through it. What I'm going to do is make a chain the length that I would like for my bottom band to be. And I want mine to be about an inch. So I'm going to chain six. And then from there, just do our back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you guys back just to show you guys how we're going to seam that up together. We have just made our way all the way around with our bottom band. We don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now let's do our outside loop slip stitch seam, which is going to be the same seam that we did for the side. So let's all start off by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. So what we're going to do is find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert our hook into that front loop. 
We are next going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert our hook in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through all three, and that's it. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain of one and cut. All right, so now that the bottom band is all finished up, the absolute last thing that we're gonna have to do is seam our strap together. So our strap is going to have another outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides and the bottom band. So we're gonna wanna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're gonna lay our straps down, making sure that they're not twisted, and we're just going to place them next to each other and insert our hook into the corner stitch of both of our straps. And from there, all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook. You're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now let's do our seam. So find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook in through that front loop. Next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and you are all done. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So our strap is all seamed up and we are all done. Now we're just gonna have to weave in all of our ends. And there you guys have it, we are all done. Hope you enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one, bye.